Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Paul E. Hall, this Country Cousins show. I'm here with uh, my good friend who's co-hosting with me today, Brandon Rebus, and uh, hadn't seen him in a while, so I figured I'd uh, have him on the show. I ran into him the other day at the supermarket, and I told him, hey, why don't you come by and come on the show? He said, yeah, sure. So uh, I'll uh, let him talk to you right now. Hey, Brandon, how you been? Great. Yeah. Glad to see you, Paul. It's uh, been a while. So yeah. How's family? Great. Everybody's good, and everybody, my daughter wanted to come on the show, but she was busy with golf, so she couldn't make it today. <laughs> Yeah, tell her that, that we don't allow amateurs on the first show. She needs a little bit of training. <laughs> you, you've been on TV for a while, and I have too, so we'd have to give her a few courses before we can let her come on. All Golf's right. a little bit different, so uh, when you get in front of a TV a screen, most people, they can talk like you and I can, and other people, they go, <laughs> they go cut, and then they say, uh, take two. They go, uh, <laughs> they can't talk, they freeze up. So I know you're not going to do that. Hopefully not this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, so how's everything been going? Yeah. Good. Everything's been good. We've been super busy at the shop, you know, nonstop. And, you know, right now is getting our slow time of the year. So things are kind of coming down to a trickle. Yeah. But we're still very, very busy at the shop. Yeah. Yeah, I passed by there the other day, and there was, there was a lot of cars out there in front, which is, you know, kind of unusual because I know they always park in the back in the parking lot out there. Yeah, lately we've been super busy, especially with the solar companies, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing a lot of placards for the companies. We do their layout placards that gives the whole layout of the uh, plants. So if the fire department has to come and turn off the power to the house, if the house catches on yeah. fire, we make up those placards for all the solar companies. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. So... All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a uh, commercial break here. When we come back, I'll get more involved in talking to Brandon, and uh, we can find out. Uh, I want everybody to find out about what they have to offer there at Sunnyside Trophy. And also, too, I want to uh, ask him, in case you're curious, I'm sure you are, how Sunnyside Trophy got started and uh, where their uh, new location is today and uh, what they do there and how they make the trophies and stuff like that. So we'll be back right after this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Country Cousins Show. I'm your host, Paul E. Hall. This is my co-host, uh, Brandon Rivas from Sunnyside Trophy. And uh, before we went to the break, 
Uh, I was talking to Brandon a little bit about the, his, the trophy shop, and uh, I wanted to basically get into uh, how they first got and uh, their new location and uh, what basically goes on there, because not a lot of people know what goes on when they make a trophy. They think somebody just gets a piece of wood and a piece of metal and just glue it together, and they put the person's name on it and they throw it out. I know it's not like that. So I wanted to ask Brandon a little bit. Uh, last I can remember, geez, it's been 20, almost 25, 30 years ago, you guys were in Kings Canyon and Clovis. Correct. So when we first started the business, it was back in 82, as my mom and dad that originally started it. Um, my mom needed a trophy for her classroom because she was a teacher at the time. Yeah. And she needed just a simple trophy. The, the trophy shop she went to couldn't produce a trophy right away. And she didn't need nothing special. She didn't need no engraving on it. She just wanted a trophy. Well, since they couldn't do it, she goes, you know what? We're gonna start a trophy business and we're gonna be the best in town. So that's how it all started. Uh, we originally started back on, believe it or not, April Fools in 1982. Wow. Yeah, so that was when we opened up our doors for business. Like you said, we're right there on Clovis Kings Canyon, next to the old Javier's building. Yeah, I remember it was, um, you had right on the, it was like a strip mall. And you had right there in the corner, you had like a uh, seamster shop. And then they had like a, a world travel place where you could go and uh, book a ticket yep. to go across the world. And then they had Gary's Shoes. Then they had you guys, and then they had Javier's Mexican food, and then right next to them there was a guy that used to deal in like baseball cards, and uh, then across the parking lot there they had um, a guy. It was a combination slash like uh, women's fine accessories, and they, you could get your hair done. It was called Robert O'Cofers. Yeah. Then they had uh, Sunnyside Jewelry. Uh, then they had uh, Kiku Floral. And they had... Uh, we also had Captain John's right there. Yeah, they had Captain John's. And they had the uh, the sports bar. And... Uh, there was they, Winchell's Donuts on the corner. Right yeah. There. And then on that same little strip mall, they had uh, Sunrise Kitchen. Correct. Which, when they tore all that down and uh, built the Walgreens there, uh, they went across the street. And uh, I know you guys moved. Now, where's your new location? We're right there on Belmont and Chestnut. We're about 200 yards away from the corner. It would be the southeast corner. Um, okay. There's a 7-Eleven on the corner that marks Chinese food restaurant, and we're right next to them. Okay. If you get to St. Uh, Helens Church, you've gone too far. Okay, yeah, I know where you're at, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, so like I said, mom started, mom and dad started the business, you know, and it's we've just grown it from there. And now we like to think of ourselves as a household name. Pretty much everybody that needs a trophy, they all come to pretty much us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. yeah. If somebody says they need a trophy, everybody says Sunnyside Trophy. Yeah. Um, we're not just limited to trophies. Um, we do anything customized from, believe it or not, we do a lot of headstones, a lot of uh, urns, caskets, anything that's marked, we pretty much can make, like your uh, travel bags, travel mugs we do a lot of uh specialized signs so there if it gets marked we pretty much make it okay now here's a question you've probably been asked this before what's what's the the craziest uh the craziest as far as like a trophy or a plaque or anything that somebody's ever requested something that was it was so far-fetched that you had to double triple check if the guy really wants us well the craziest thing was probably you know the uh horror movie saw yeah. The chainsaw, yeah. we did that. Oh, man. So they wanted a chrome-plated chainsaw duplicate of the movie because they're doing another one, and so we had to come up with it. So whether it's with the Oscars making up, you know, uh, awards for corporate events, if your imagination can think of it, we can make it. Yeah, I know. One time I went by your shop, and yeah, it was like seven and a half foot tall. That big Oscar statue, like everybody gets presented there. And it's like out there on the red carpet. Yep, those are the ones that are lined up along the red carpet that yeah. you see on TV. That thing was huge. So yeah, it's called the Huge A Award. <laughs> <laughs> now here's another thing too. I know that you do a lot of stuff with the Fresno City Schools, and uh, 
as, as far as like uh, um, commercial stuff uh, and individuals, but like uh, what do you mostly do stuff with like a, um, your biggest clients, are they like commercial or do you, believe it or not, do you do a lot of stuff with like um, residential, you know, as far as like just private individuals and they say, uh, okay, I got a soccer team that I'm doing and I want to do this or how do you do that? Well, it depends on the time of the year, honestly. We do a lot of corporate stuff all year long. We do a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of government work. So with uh, Cal Fire, Fresno Police Department, Sheriff's Department, all the different agencies, FBI, CIA, um, Border Patrol, we pretty much, American Ambulance, we do them all. And also all the military from Lemoore to the Fresno Air National Guard. Um, we have stuff that is not just locally, we send stuff out pretty much nationwide. Yeah, so I know that one time I came by there, you were working on that plaque you said you've been working on for a couple of weeks for, it was a veteran that he wanted the, like a memorial plaque for, it was like for Desert Storm. Yeah, and Boots in the Sand. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Was yep. he happy with it? Oh, loved it, loved yeah. it. Um, not just hit that one, I mean, we've pretty much every president, while they're in the White House, one of our awards have always gone to them. That's so we've cool. seen it. We've uh, done stuff for uh, Vince Scully, for the Dodgers. It, I mean, like I said, we've had famous people come into the shop all the time. Uh, like when Richard Killen was around, we had him. Uh, Tom Seaver used to come in all the time back in yeah. the day. I know, like I mentioned Gary's shoes earlier. I remember when I'd go in Gary's, he had a couple bats that Tom Seaver autographed for him. Yes. And he had them there. They were uh, set aside from on the back wall, like when you first go in and you you go to the register, you'd see him have a big picture of Tom Seaver. At that time, he was pitching for the Mets, and he also had a poster of him when he was pitching for the Cincinnati Reds. Reds. And yep. He said, yeah, he says, yeah, I know his dad. He lives over there by the golf course, and he said, I've been friends with that guy for years, and, and I remember when he got uh, voted into the Hall of Fame, Gary and his wife, they went back there. Correct. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. In fact, speaking of Gary, uh, the shoe repairs, Siliano, he is in our building as well, uh, Sunnyside Shoe Clinic, is Gary Shoes. Yeah, that's what everybody asked me. They said, whatever happened to Gary Shoes? I said, well, they're still around. The guy that was his uh, right-hand man that learned all the trade from Gary, Salviano, like you said, he's got his own shop, and he's inside the building where Sunnyside Trophy is. When I tell people there, they go, oh, man, that guy, he's the best. And I said, well, that's where we used to go to, you know, ever since I was a, a kid. Well, and people would go in there, and they'd say, how long you known this guy? I said, well, I'm 60. I've been coming here, and i know known Gary's shoes since I was 14. They go, wow. Yeah, so well, I know he's been doing it ever since he was like 13, 12, 13 in Mexico. Yeah. And he's he's a craftsman, a true craftsman when it comes to shoe repair. Yeah, he is. And a good thing about it is you take something to him that he's either going to tell you, I can fix it or I can't fix it. He's not going to string you along and say, leave it for a day or two, and you go back, and then the guy says, well, I, I couldn't fix it. Instead of, you know, disclosing to you up front, I can't fix it, he, you leave your shoe or your boot there or something, and it's stuck there. So yeah. that's what's good about him. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So besides the uh, doing the trophies and everything like that, uh, what's your the, the biggest, like, peak season? Like, are you guys busy in the summertime, or is it around Christmas? or? Well, it's going to be June time frame just prior to June because it's the end of the school year. So we have all the schools coming in for all the awards. And usually the schools, they're like pretty much last minute too. So it's like at that very end because they don't know what kids are going to get the honor rolls, which ones are going to, you know, have the perfect attendance, which yeah. one. Because there's a lot of those kids that are right there on the cusp. They don't know whether or not they're going to get it or not. So, and that's the cool thing. You know, we get to see – pretty much in our business it's always a joyous occasion it's always happy it's always a good so yeah. the customers that we get they're all first class everybody that comes on in you know i can't say enough about them they're always really good and yeah. you know they're they're fun to talk to you know find out their stories and you know everything about it it's, it's and why the kids or whoever's getting the award uh we, we're not just like the shop that okay we're just going to give it to you and just take a little bit of we're going to ask you questions and yeah. dig in find out you know make the board the best it could possibly be yeah 
And the good thing about your business is if somebody's satisfied, they'll tell somebody and they'll come back and then not only do they come back, but the person that was satisfied that recommended that customer, they'll come back and they become a regular customer. So they, it's like you, you make a good friend. Absolutely. You know, and pretty much all of our advertisements, all word of mouth. We really don't do a whole lot of advertising as far as, you know, with the commercials or, you know, we've done the uh, phone book, but not anymore. We dropped it yeah. off. So. Yeah. Yeah, once you, you you get the word out there and everybody knows that you're basically the only game in town, then you don't you don't really have to advertise because if you've got so much business now, it's you can't keep up with it. Right. We're always like, we're talking now about even expanding our business to a bigger building, but we need to find something that is going to benefit us in the location, yeah. like how where we're at now. We just yeah. need a bigger building. Yeah. So. You you. You're actually looking for a building, or you think about expanding onto that building? No, uh, we have to move out of that building into something bigger, because we have a on the other side, the other half, we have a whole new industry side of it where it's uh, we have a CNC machine, and we're getting that going now. Okay. So where we can make anything out of metal, pretty much, or well, wood. And all yeah. That. And then you you mentioned we're going to take a commercial break, but when we come back, you mentioned that you do like. Uh, you can also do like headstones and stuff like that for the cemetery. So that's pretty interesting because a lot of there's only like a couple people in town that do something like that. And uh, the, I know people that come to me and they said, "Hey, my grandma died," or they'll say, "Hey, my cousin died," or even they'll say like, "My mom and dad." And we're looking for a headstone. We went to this place. They're like booked up six months out. We can't get anything. Do you know some some place that'll do it? So that's good to know that you guys can do that. So. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's Country Cousin Show. I'm your host, Paul Lee Hall. This is my co-host, Brandon Rivas. And we'll be back right after these messages. back, ladies and gentlemen, the Country Cousin Show. I'm your host, Paul Ehaw. This is my co-host, my good friend, Brandon Rivas, and uh, he's with Sunnyside Trophy. And uh, before we went to the break, we were talking about the trophies and the aspect of how they make them and everything. So I told him just before we went, and I promised you guys when we come back, he said that the, they went into the aspect of doing uh, cemetery 
uh, plots and doing uh, grave marker stones for that. And so uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about that because just before we went to the break, I mentioned how some people, uh, they, they can't get a plaque or they can't even get a, a little marker because most of these people that do it, there's only a couple places in town they are booked up. I mean, beyond belief. So it's kind of frustrating for somebody that had a loved one that passed away and they can't get, they can't even get a small marker. So you want to elaborate a little bit on that, Brandon? Sure. Um, when you have a headstone made up, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, depending on the cemetery, you need to know what their rules and regulations are because sometimes they require certain things on that headstone marker. Yeah. Um, and there's certain size dimensions. Sometimes there's a minimum, sometimes there's a maximum size. Um, so you need to have all that information when you come on in. If you don't, we'll call up the cemetery to find out, you know, is there anything that is required for our customer that, that needs to be put on there. The process takes anywhere between six to 12 weeks, depending on what the markers, how we're doing it. So it's- And also a, probably it depends on the size too. Correct. Uh, I mean, it, they could be a little four by six piece of uh, bronze plating, or it could be a 10 foot by eight foot wall marker. So we've done them all from anything in between that size. Um, but it's very important that you figure out the information, what you need to put on there first before you come on into the shop. And okay. be prepared to, it, it's not a quick process because what they have to do is make a mold for that. Each one's an individual mold and then they pour, you know, for right, the bronze yeah. plate, so. Now, have you ever had the uh, Veterans Administration call up and they say, hey, we had a fallen soldier and we'd like to have a, a plaque made for him or a marker or something and, you know, uh, can you help us out and then you like work in conjunction with them? Yes, we have. We've, like I said, we've had the veterans, we do a lot with the military or the uh, law enforcement agencies like uh, fallen officers. We, we've we done a lot with our government agencies. Okay. So it's not just, you know, the people coming in off the street it's everybody and so we, it. we service everybody and anybody and that's what we pride ourselves on to make everything go as smooth as possible yeah yeah and people like it that way they don't want to come in and they feel like uh, they're getting the run around or they feel like they're spending their hard-earned money on something and they're not going to get what they want correct absolutely yeah now what about uh, as far as the veterans, did they get like a veterans discount or you take care of them? Or? Yeah, um, what happens is with even law enforcement and veterans, because um, we're very pro uh, military and yeah. uh, law enforcement, we always give our uh, people the best possible price. So we can't say it's a discount, but it's not the normal retail price. Exactly. So yeah. we're, we're not calling it a discount, we're just giving it to you. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. There's a lot yeah. of a lot of places that you go in there and they say, do you have a military discount or like you said, law enforcement? And they say no. So that's kind of a turnoff if somebody goes in there and they say, well, you know, we treat a veteran or somebody that's law enforcement, we treat them just like somebody off the street. So that's not good. Uh, so it, it's, it's good the way that you guys do it. Right. Yeah. So also, too, another thing I was going to uh, mention uh, and I had people actually ask me when I, they found out you're going to be on the show, is do you make more of uh, the uh, wood plaques or trophies, or do you make more of the, like, uh, the metal ones? What, what's, what's the biggest seller as far as, like, trophies go? Is it more wood where you have to get on there and you have to, like, put it on a router or a lathe or something, or do you make basically just somebody says, just give me a bronze cup or, uh, the, you know, some kind of cup and put it on and put the person's name on there? What? What's the biggest seller? Boy, as far as volume, it's going to be your medals. You know, like your uh, marathon medals, because yeah, those are like, always like track and field. Track and field, because like we'll do the stuff for uh, the support blue run, and when they order those medals, they're ordering five thousand medals wow. at a time. So they're big quantity. So when you're talking quantity, that's one thing. If you're talking quality. That's something different. Yeah. 
um, for your retirement stuff, it's either going to be a acrylic award or a plaque. Um, it's not going to be your standard, you know, 1970s plaque with just your wood board <laughs> and a brass plate, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be something nicer and more modern. Yeah. So. Um, and but, probably, like you mentioned about the 5,000, like, medals, the medallions you had for, like, some kind of run or, like you're saying, for the police department if they have, like, a run or something. It's probably generic, so where it shows, like, a runner, then something's just stamped on the back and it's all, actually, all the no, same. it's not. No? no they're all are, different? No, they're, well, it's a custom medal for them. Okay. Um, so what happens is we design up a medal that is their medal, and there's no other medal like it in the world except oh, for that one. So, like, for example, we wanted to make this microphone into a metal. We'll take that picture of this microphone, and then we'll have us two sitting in the background behind it, uh -huh. and we can make that into a metal. Oh, so man. everything is very customized. Yeah. There's nothing. Yes, there is generic stuff out there for a lot of stuff, but if you're going big quantities, you want to do custom. Okay. But so, in other words, when somebody comes in, they're not just getting something to work. It's just like piece work where it's coming down like an assembly line. They're no. getting every every metal is individually thought out and w worked out on as far as like on a piece of paper before they actually mold it. You talk to the client, client agrees, I love that. And then you work on each one like it's individual. Correct. And also, it may not even be to the quantity that we're doing a molded piece. It could be something where we're sublimating. So it's almost like a... Uh, a collage image for this that we imprint onto metal. So it's like a colored photo that goes onto the metal. Yeah. And it's something like that as well. Okay. So there, there's nothing. And yeah, we do have our generic metals. And because there are some people that say, I need a metal today. And, you know, in their last minute, and well, I don't have time to make that metal for you. So we have to use generic stuff once in a while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Well, that's good to know. Uh, you, in other words, when somebody comes in there, it doesn't matter whether they get 15 or they're getting 15,000. Each one is uh, they you're you're not simultaneously manufacturing like I said, like a similar line. You're taking each one and you're individually working on it as though as that that's the only metal going out. Correct. Which is Absolutely. Good. Yeah, you put craftsmanship into it. Correct. Yeah. It's it's like you said, craftsmanship and it's quality, and that's what we pride ourselves on. Yeah. So when somebody gets something from Sunnyside Trophy, they know they're they're getting something good, and then I got to get something that's cheap that they can buy at the flea market. Absolutely. So that's good. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take another break. When we come back, uh, Brandon and I are going to chit chat about old times. We'll talk a little bit more about the trophy shop. So we'll be back right after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, the Country Cousins Show. I'm your host, Paul E. Hall. This is my good friend and co-host for the day, Brandon Rivas from Sunnyside Trophy. Before we left, we were talking about uh, making trophies and uh, everything that goes into it and how they individually uh, treat people that come in there. And so if you're looking for a good quality medal, plaque, or trophy, or even something, to, a marker for your grave, then go and see the people at Sunnyside Trophy. They'll help you out. They're, they're more than happy to work with you to make sure that you're satisfied because if you're not satisfied, they're not satisfied. So you can see on the bottom of the screen, my engineers put up uh, their number and you can get that and give them a call, go by there, they're right off of uh, Chestnut and Belmont. And uh, they'll, like I said, they'll be more than happy to work with you. So anyway, I saw you at the store, so I didn't get a chance to ask you because it got too crowded, but I was gonna ask you how's uh, uh, your wife, uh, Sandy doing? And, How's the daughter actually doing? Well, I hadn't seen him for a while. Well, my daughter's keeping us busy. She <laughs> probably runs the house, actually. You know, she was doing travel softball for the longest time, and we're heavy into that. And then she got burned out because she was pitching too much, and her shoulder got bad. Oh, and man. So now she's uh, taking up golf, and I'd rather have her do golf than softball. So yeah. it's, you know, also for uh, scholarship reasons, too. Yeah. So. It's, women's golf is pretty good for that. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, I had a couple of friends. They told me they said they told me a couple of weeks ago. They said I was thinking about you too. They said, Hey, you said you seen Brandon Rivas lately? And I said, No. Nah. I said, You know how that guy is. I said he gets married. They got a kid. And I said the guy disappears. He he's like DB Cooper. He you can't find him. You might see a couple hundred dollar bills wandering around in his yard or something like that from when he jumped out of the plane. But other than that, you'll never be able to find the guy. He's <laughs> He's uh, he's out there somewhere. He's uh, missing in action. So, and then uh, people always bring up the time where uh, the good old days when the Fresno Falcons used to be at the oh, Silver yes. Arena, and uh, <laughs> we used to always our watering hole back in those days, ladies and gentlemen, was the uh, old Fresno Hulk Brow, and uh, we'd go there and hang out and get something to eat, and we drink and drink and drink and drink, and next thing you know, the bartender says, "Last call." It's about 1.30, and everybody gets up, and their legs start uh, shaking like Elvis from the waist down, and nobody knows where they're at. And uh, then we try to get into our car and go home, and I'll never forget that time I went out there, and I didn't know that there was an undercover policeman. And he's standing there talking to the bartender, and I remember everybody uh, had left. And so I come out there, and I see all these guys jumping on my truck, and they're making the truck up and down. I yelled at them, you guys, get off my truck. So they're out there going, yahoo, yahoo. Yeah, you guys get on my truck. So I got mad. So I go running over there. I get in the truck. My girlfriend's with me. She says, what are you going to do? I said, shut up. She said, what are you going to do? I said, you don't want to know. So I put the truck in reverse. I spun out. I threw everybody off of the truck. They started running. I put it in drive. She's screaming. She says, you're out of your control. You're a crazy man. I says, I don't care. I'm going to run these guys over for jumping on the truck. You know, but about that time, I hear this. Next thing you know, here comes a cop car. He's coming up in the parking lot, and he says, all right, you guys. He says, stop right there. So he tells a couple of the other guys out there to, you know, can they make it home? And then I didn't get it that easy. I had this guy come up, and he's a plainclothes policeman, and he flashes his badge, and he said, I need you to step the back of the truck. So I got my head down, and he says, he puts his badge right in my face. He says, I don't want to know what happened, and I don't care to know what happened, but I suggest you go home and you sleep it off. You got that? I got my head down. I go, yes, sir, officer. He said, I can't hear you. Look up. I go, yes, sir, officer. He said, get in there. So he goes and he looks in the window and he says, my girlfriend, he says, can you make sure you can get home? She goes, yeah, it's all this macho BS. I tried to tell him the cops was going to get him. He wouldn't listen. So the cop looks at her and he says, ma'am, you're a smart lady. Take this guy home. So I remember from that day on, I never drank anymore. Yeah. I never drank anymore after that. And a, a, a couple of days later, we saw... Uh, um, uh, Dick Smith. Yeah, we saw Dick Smith, who had Smitty's Bell Bonds. And he says, uh, yeah, he says, uh, I sure wish that... Uh, that was my son. That was a policeman. I told him, he should have busted all you guys. Then he would have to call me to bail out. <laughs> I said, yeah, Dick, uh, I don't want to bail out in those circumstances. 
Yeah, it was like Mannix. And you're driving through the parking yeah, lot. exactly. The guy's looking. Da 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 Yeah, and I was I was trying to run him over. How I didn't hit any of those cars from the back end of the truck weaving, I'll never know. Yeah. Though, though, man, those were crazy times. Yeah. But like I said, after that, it, it scared the you know what out of me, and I I never drank anymore. At that, they go, you want a beer? I said, what? A beer? I said, yeah, if it's root beer. Other than that, forget it. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, be in jail. Hey, how come you're in jail? Oh, I was stupid. I was trying to run some people over in the parking lot, the old <laughs> Fresno Hall Brow, and uh, the cops got me. So I, I don't want anything like that on my uh, my uh, certificate, <laughs> your resume. Yeah. Hey, I hear you got busted. Yeah, I was trying to run some friends over. Yeah. Those were the crazy days. Oh, man. And the crazy thing about it was I looked for you at the old Fresno, and uh, you didn't come in there, and somebody says, I said, well, he won't be in till you know, uh, the uh, Falklands come in. He always comes in right after that. And uh, next thing I know, you walked in, and uh, I said, hey, what are you doing here so early? I said, it's only like 10.30. He goes, yeah, they kicked me out of the game. I said, what happened? He said, well, the ref made a bad call, and uh, myself and a couple of other guys, we started throing fish on the ice. Because so we're, we're playing the San Diego goals at the time. Yeah. I said, what? He said, yeah, they kicked me out. You go, Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I didn't even know the guy that brought the big old bag of fish. Oh, so, man, like, I can't believe it. Yeah, the, nobody could believe it when you yeah. come in. And then, then it just, the game kept was prolonged, and it was like a shoot-off. And everybody says, it's 1130. They go, where's the Falcons? And then the guy says, oh, didn't you hear? No, they're in a shootout. Uh, the, you know, it's, it's all tied up, and they're, they're shooting on goals. And then they finally come in there, and that, that was a wild night. Yeah, those were the good old days. Yeah, uh, my boss, at that time I was working at a TV station, my boss says, you know what? He says, uh, you must have a green underwear. I said, why is that? He said, because I can't believe you're so lucky that they didn't take you to jail for drinking and driving. I said, no, I never got out of the parking lot. He said, yeah, lucky for you. I said, yeah, yeah. you're right. Absolutely. That was crazy. So. so, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for uh, today's show, the Country Cousin Show. I'm uh, your host, Paul E. Hall, and uh, this is my uh, good friend and uh, co-host, Brandon Rivas. And uh, he's with Sunnyside Trophy. And like I said, if you're looking for a medal or a trophy or a plaque or anything to celebrate an anniversary or uh, celebrate a wedding or uh, your uh, son or daughter getting a good grade at school or something, or even if you want a marker for a grade for a loved one that's passed away, go by and see the folks there at Sunnyside Trophy. They'll help you. They'll be more than happy to help you. Uh, their motto is, is they're not happy unless you're happy. So my engineers put their number on the bottom of the screen and uh, give them a call. Uh, they're on uh, Belmont. Uh, they're, and if you're going northbound on Chestnut, they're, uh, I'd say, let's see, about 500 yards uh, east of uh, Chestnut. So yep. right next to Mark's Kitchen. So go by there and see them. Actually, what's the address? 4836 East Belmont. 4836 East Belmont. There you go. You heard it right from the guy that's uh, the big shot there at Sunnyside Trophy. Just kidding, Phil. <laughs> so you go by there and, and see them over at Sunnyside Trophy. Like I said, they'll be glad to help you out. So, Brandon, thanks for coming by. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Yeah. I've had a great time, and I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you coming by. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that'll take care of our show, uh, Country Cousins. I'm Paul E. Or your host. And like I said, this is my good friend, Brandon Rivas, who is co-host for the day. And uh, we'll see you next week.